Our caddy has arrived. Hello. What's your name? India. India? Oh, same thing. Oh. <laughs> Looks like the dog may have stolen the ball, which is not good for me because if I lose all these golf balls, I have to pay for someone to come play with me. No. What players? That ball is gone. Hi, I'm Matt. What a life. I'm on my way to Bangkok from Chiang Mai by train, playing golf courses at every stop with rental clubs. I only have eight golf balls and $777 left to fund everything. If I lose all the balls or the money before Bangkok, I will not financially recover. Rick Shields enforcing his dominance over Peter Finch. After shooting 85 and learning about breaking 90 with Taj, I left Gassan Kuntan a happy boy. I did, however, have to walk six kilometers back to the train station. Hi, I'm Matt, and this is Misadventures in Golf. Have you ever wondered what Uttaradit in the north of Thailand is famous for? Me neither. But I came here to chew chewing gum and play golf, and I'm all out of chewing gum. Well, it's time to look for how to get transport out of here. Hey, there's Grab. It's only an hour, so I was prepared to walk the seven kilometers to the local army course. I needed to check if they had rental clubs, but this bustling metropolis has Grab Taxi. Hello. Hello. Do you have, do you have rental clubs? No. Not a good start. <laughs> Maybe you have. I did a quick Google Translate and map search, and I found a second-hand shop but how to get there? I got another Grab Taxi. I went to the first golf course to find out if they actually have golf clubs. There's no rental clubs. So we're gonna have to get some golf clubs. It's right next to a highway. We're gonna, we found some over here, so let's see what we have. Okay, they're about 100 baht each per iron. And the, the woods look like they're about 400 baht, so that's about, it's about $12, $13. Good little dog over here. Hello. This is a Mizuno Polaris. I've actually owned those before. Scientifically designed. Scientifically designed. And they are now being sold for $3 each. We've got a beautiful Mizuno putter. It looks kind of like my Cleveland Classic V. Look at this. Look at that. It's almost identical. It's a K31. K31 sandwich. We've got a Bridgestone Vincent pitching wedge. We've got a Mizuno putter. It looks similar to the one I use. We've got an 8 and a 6 iron from the Polaris in the Mizuno. We've got a little 9 wood delta step, top lanking, Bridgestone RV10. It's a tailor-made burner super steel 7 wood. And then the 4 iron, also a K31. Okay, so 1,500. How about free bag? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> we've got the free bag. Thank you, thank you. Hey, we've got clubs now. Let's go play some golf. One more grab taxi. <laughs> we are at Moor 2 Golf Course in Uttaradit. Now remember we've got 8 golf balls left until Bangkok. So we're going to tee off with one of the balls that we have. Everyone at the course is so friendly. Countryside courses in Thailand are not always in the best condition, but the people are always the nicest. Here's our transportation for the day, with our caddy. What's your name? India. 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 <laughs> yeah, on the watch, it tells you as you play, up at the top there, 201, so it's about 200 yards. The GPS watch is a must-have for something like this. The Garmin doesn't require sensors in the top of the clubs, which means you can use it with any clubs. It tracks the distances by feeling the jolt in your hands at impact. We've got 167. We're going to take the beautiful six iron I bought, the Mizuno Polaris All Star. 
Discovering courses with the measurements and using the live counter to quickly learn my distances with the rental clubs is half the battle won. So we're pitching, look at that. So we can see that there's my ball and there's the pin from the other hole. So that's kind of the line I predicted on my map, which is good. I want it to be just slightly left of this bunker, but I couldn't see it from the tee. So I'm okay with this shot. Not much option due to the fact that the corner there was obstructed. If I play it again, I would hit a seven word further right because I think I can clear it. This shot has gone 196. So Pretty wide open there at about 240 yards. Looks like the widest part of the fairway. That's from the tees back here. So it's probably not that much different, 240-ish. So I'm gonna hit a driver. Okay, that driver's gone probably about 265. Now we have to find our way. about 10 or 15 yards short of that maybe maybe 20 yards short but it's okay well the caddy says it's on what a caddy what a india it says it's saying 161 on the watch it pitched here so we can use the eight iron nice easy swing like that we can use as 161 so we got 161 8 171 6 195 4 225 237 wood we're going to work out the pitching and the sandwich Planting feathers, growing birdies. Okay, here we go. We're gonna hit the driver again. We're gonna establish whether I can hit it. If it snaps left, like on the previous hole, I'm not gonna be hitting it again for the rest of the round. And after this round, I'll go buy another one. I'm gonna tee it down a little bit because I think if it's too high, that encourages the snap left. And put the ball further forward in the stars to allow more of a slicer. I know there's water up front there from my little notebook. Water is 191 to carry. We've got 300 yards. We can either lay it up short of the water. We have to lay up to 154. So we're going to leave like another 150 yard shot in. I don't want to do that because I don't know the clubs. We're going to go try go over that water. So we'll go at that at the right edge of the green side bunker. So luckily I did my homework here and I saw that it widened out back here on this side. So I knew a seven wood would clear this and I knew that this was triangular or heart shape with a wide space over here. That's why I hit the, the seven wood to get over this water. If I lay it up here, I still have like a 150, 160 yard shot in. I have that shot. If I didn't have that club, I'd be laying it up and then hitting an eight or seven iron into the green. partial wedge shot many people will always say you want to be close to the green all the time I thought I did there and I just struggled with partial shots from 50 yards anyway now with a new pitching wedge or new sandwich it's gonna be really difficult so the caveat is always get closest to the green as you can but people don't see the caveat that they say in those books and in the systems unless you have significant problems with partial wedges 
I'd rather have a 78 to 100 yard shot in there with a pitching wedge or sand wedge. But I chose a 50 and I bladed it across the green. What a life. So we've got this map I've made here and I figure to be away from that tree, you want to be about 128 yards. We want to stay short of that tree enough that we can have a shot over the tree because the problem is it's 381 yards. We need to be far enough back so we can get over. If we go too close, it's in our way. We have to hit finagled shots. Seven would hopefully leave a 150, 160 shot in. That should give me enough space. Okay, well, we've, we've hit a bit of a shuri here, players. We are 210 from the tee. We've still got 173 to the middle of the green. We've missed the target. We should have been that way further left to be able to have the view of the green. We're going to have to go over trees blind. 162 to the front, it was a 161 yard eight iron back there. I think if I go with the eight, I'm going to have more than enough height to clear the tree there instead of taking the six and worrying about the height. Because if I take a six, I'm going to worry it's not going to get up in time, not hit a committed shot, and then I'm going to have problems. So an eight iron, I know I'm going to clear those trees and hit it at least 160 to the front edge of this green. Just in front of the green there, I pushed it a little bit, but it went right over the top of the tree I wanted to go over. Perfect. If I take a six and try to angle it, I'll probably hit it into the middle of the trees or pull it. Good decision. More aggressive shot, always best for me. We're always talking about proximity to the green, but we never talk about proximity to the green of the cart. And here, it doesn't matter. You can go right up to the green. No one cares, and it's even encouraged. Oh! Haven't lost any golf balls this round yet, which is good. But we still got some tricky holes, looks like, in the Google Maps coming up. Oops. Oopsie. Go. Just a little short, but at least we're on. Got the putt for the par. Dong dong. And my caddy, my caddy has brought the, the <laughs> sign. <laughs> she brought the sign for me. Thank you. But I was thinking to get to the widest part, you need about 220. So we, we are expecting those two little trees over there. They're 223 away. I think if I go further right of those trees, I'll be okay. Obviously, it's a nine wood, so it has a regular shaft, a beautiful top Lankin Delta step. <laughs> We're going to try go no more. Than 200 yards at those two trees uh, I predicted. It's a good shot, but we're going to have a very, very long shot into the green. But nice little nine wood. I finally have one. I might try ship this back to me in Bangkok and actually keep it. So the reason I was saying like that distance max is because of. This tree here, it grows deep into the fairway and these trees here. So we have this avenue, which I've just about made. But if I was further that way, I would have a clearer shot at the green. It's going to be a long shot regardless because we can't really hit more than 230 because of that little stream across the way there. And if you go too far this way, this is the direct line on my ball over here. You're behind that tree over there and then you're blocked out from the hole. So we can see that nine wood went 195, same as a four nine. iron. So we've got a 202 yard shot. Let's have a look at that lie. Can I get the four iron on that ball? Yes. Will I get a nine wood on it easier? Yes. It's going to be a little short, I think. Okay, mate. A 438 yard hole and it's just that's all you can see if you can tell me where the hole goes I'll give you a lot of money this is probably the most difficult tee shot I may have ever seen in my entire life I'm not kidding all I can see is a little strip there I haven't seen a hole like this since maybe Sun City in South Africa just see a little hole there and it's 250 
and I can see to about 3.30. I don't know how wide that fairway is. And the caddies told me to just go straight. Just go straight. So we may be, um, we may be in danger of uh, losing golf balls here and being closer to paying for someone to come to Thailand. And that's probably the best drive I've ever hit in my life, right when I need it. <laughs> wow! Hey, Naika. I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, my God. My caddy loves me. So I've, I've been given a beautiful Kanompang Luket. We've got a pretty good lie here in the fairway. I mean, it's, the word fairway is used very loosely here. The different definitions in different parts of the country. Oh, not there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, we've missed it short left, but it's okay. I think I had too many thoughts in my head. We see we have to get rid of the thoughts and be in the shot. What was I thinking about? I was thinking about the dim sum I had this morning and the Vietnamese coffee and how I'd like to go right back there right now and sit and have it. Now, why am I thinking about that? Well, because I love it. And because this shot wasn't that important to me. Give every shot the, the, the respect it deserves because... Wherever you hit the next shot, you're going to have to go play another one. So solve this problem, then think about your dim sum, and then go solve the next problem. Because for every problem you're solving on a golf course, you're creating a brand new one with millions of variables. What am I doing? You know, there's a song by Alanis Morissette, Thank You India. Okay, a little bit more power. Maybe we're going to use pitching wedges on, this, on these shots. What a good caddy! Hey! Ish. See, like, if you, you have to know your trajectory for these punch shots. So, if you're in the crap, you want to know, like, okay, woof, if I hit a certain club, is it going to come up here and hit this stuff? Because that's going to knock your ball off the target or even just drop it straight down. I want to go under that and I think a, a nice punchy eight iron, like a long chip shot with like 80%, 90% power is going to get to the green quite nicely. Okay, I probably should have taken the six to be honest. Let's try the six iron. Now let's try the six iron in the same situation. Because the six iron is only going like 170, maybe that punch shot taking 30 yards off is, is a better idea. Yeah, definitely. The six iron is much closer. We've got an easier chip. We've got more like a pitch shot with the eight iron. So, depends on your club, okay? But just take less loft to not hit the tree here instead of copy paste golf hitting whatever's going to hit the tree. There's the six iron. And here's the eight iron. So we've now the pitching wedge I bought is a is a Bridgestone Vincent, scientifically designed. And I'm taking a pitching wedge here because I feel like the sand wedge is just stopping because it's a very spongy green. I mean they're not good greens. So if I take a sand wedge, I have to really fly it along. An aggressive pitching wedge about halfway between the edge and the pin is going to be great. See, even that is not enough. We've got to get that further up. An eight. Hmm, not bad, not bad. The greens are rolling at a very true six. That's off the toe. We've got not much going for us. We've got 370. So whatever I hit here, it has to leave me a decent shot in. We've got 224 as the crow flies dead straight at those white stakes, 224. If I hit two, two, 224, I might have 150, 160 in. We're gonna go with a nine wood at the pink flowers because we have to, this is adventure. This is, this is misadventures in golf. Oh, what a shot, Maddie. Maddie. That's the best nine wood I've ever hit in my life because it's only the second one I've ever hit. We have some protectors. Helping us. Ding, 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 ding. We've hit that nine wood, 208. So a beautiful nine wood is 208 yards. Just stunning. Good shot. 
<laughs> Looks like the dog may have stolen the ball, which is not good for me because if I lose all these golf balls, I have to pay for someone to come play with me. <laughs> He's taking the golf ball. Hey, where's my golf ball, man? It was on the green. Oh my word. Okay, it has to be the dog that steals the ball and not me actually playing like a dog. Well, the pitch mark was here and he stole the ball. Amazing Thailand. <laughs> No good, can be really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so immediately after this thing, I don't know where the hell the golf balls are. I put them in my in my bag. Uh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god, dude! They slipped down the cart because this thing is so decrepit. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not putting them on the seat again. I'll just stick them in this in the IKEA bag. Otherwise, we're in trouble. I didn't realize it until later, but the blue ball that was in the bag of golf balls fell out the golf cart. One more ball so go gone. Pitching wedge. Just a bit short. Let's test the sandwich though. Let's go sandwich. We haven't had a full shot in yet, so let's test, let's test the sandwich. I probably should have just trusted that. That's probably in the hole. Yeah, so the sandwich was the correct play. <laughs> wow, that's so dreadfully slow, players. No, Mary, oh, Mary. That's a pity. Look at this guy coming here. You just stole my golf ball, bro. Come, come here. Hey. This is the golf ball thief, acting like nothing happened. You, you crazy bastard. Look at this bad boy. All the thieves are here. All the thieves are here. Okay, probably a little short, but that's really on target. I like that a lot. Okay, so we're gonna bump it. Eight iron up here. I like that, I like that a lot. What a terrible chip, but it works better. Okay, beautiful. But because this thing is like a weird dog leg, like I say, sometimes you need to know how far you need to hit the ball to avoid all that stuff. And I think if I hit a driver, I can probably get this near the green. Let's go driver. I hit a couple good drives today. If I can replicate that just one time, it's going to be good. But I figure that if I do pull it, it's, it's wide there. Past 230 yards, it's very wide. But I really do have to go left. I don't want to go too far right because there may be trouble. This is a high risk shot and we've got to take it. Especially if this likes to turn over. No. What well, players, that ball is gone. Hey, look at this ball over here. Man, that was a big pull, but we did it. I mean, I'm not proud of the shot, but it worked because of such a big... Remember, planting feathers, growing birdies. You can plant them. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make the birdie straight away. You may make it in your next round, the next 10 rounds, but somewhere, someone in the world is making a birdie thanks to your deposit. Actually, you can't really go for it because these trees are actually blocking that line directly to the green. So it's not even a possible shot. This is probably the best you can do and it was very lucky. So using skill, I'd put it further back there for a longer shot in. Oh my gosh, there's something wrong with that ball. It just went boop. Or maybe it's the wedge, I don't know. But we need to get a bit tighter inside a hundred. Almost finished this round, players, and I'm really looking forward to going to go find a new cafe out here in Uttaradit. Love a coffee. Maybe a little caker. 
and that's a, another up and down part. I'm not hitting greens, right? But at least I'm learning about chipping the greens, how it's reacting, go a bit more aggressive, less loft. Instead of trying to smash sandwiches, use an eight or a, or a pitching wedge. It's really working out better. This is the free par three. So this one is 19th. It's a, a handicap stroke index of zero. Because they've closed one of the holes, which was actually a very nice hole, number four, we have to play this hole to make up for it. So I don't even know. I'm full of water. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's get this bad boy in play. We've got like 700 yards in front of us. Par six. First par six in my life. It's going to be good up there. I like that a lot. We've got 257 in. Okay, let's go eight on. We're going to go eight on. Stay well short of that water, well short, and leave ourselves a pitching wedge in. We're going to chip and putt like we're doing all round long. What a life. We're going to tap a rune ski. In ski. What a life. What a caddy, huh? Now if you make a hole in one on this par three, you get one butt of gold, which is equal to about a half ounce of gold. Probably, probably worth about 500, 600 bucks. So if I get it, I'm giving it to my caddy. We've got 160 yards. Go in the hole. Oh, no hole in one. Oh, no buddy, no tip. It's a famous Bob Marley song. India, famous Bob Marley song, no bed in, no teep. <laughs> okay. My caddy has found it. What we are in, so luckily we haven't lost the golf course, but it is sitting up somehow. And we are at the driving range, so we have to be careful we don't die because there's, there's no net here. Oh, that's fine. At least we didn't lose the golf ball. Looks like we only lost two balls today, so we're only down to six golf balls until Bangkok. ค่ะค่ะเพราะว่าหนึ่งนายไม่เคยมาตีสนามนี้สนามที่นี่เป็นสนามค่อนข้างจะต่างจังหวัดถ้าเรียกง่ายๆก็คือเป็นสนามบ
หมาหมาหมาไม่ดีตัวเดียวค่ะหมาตัวอื่นดีแต่แค่ที่โอเค Look I'll I'll blame the dog 10% but blame the caddy bad 10% and for me only 10% and one day, one birdie ทิปนิดหน่อยไม่เป็นไรค่ะไม่ซีเรียสนายน่ารักก็พอแล้วนายตีดีก็พอแล้วเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเราพบว่าเรา I don't know what that is. I mean, it's supposed to be a built-in dining area. We've got a little fridgey, and here's where the magic happens, a little bathroom. So nothing to complain about yet. This is only going to cost me about 18 bucks a night, which is perfect. I'm going to have to go get some soap and stuff, though. They're all detached, so you're never going to hear other people, which is fantastic. I don't like hotels because of that above you and to the side of you, especially in Thailand. So you drive your car up in here, you got your little place, what a life. Less than 20 bucks, thank you very much. I'll see you for the next round around the same town before we GTFO down the country. I'll have to get the other driver first though. Okay.